don't share that with your partner, you can blow up on your partner. Yeah, and take everything out on them, which mm-hmm. I do sometimes. Um, sometimes. I do it. <laughs> uh, guilty as charged, mm-hmm. but... Uh, this week on Half Past Cha, we are going to be doing everybody's favorite segment for the whole episode, and that is questions of the week. We've got so many great questions to speak for you guys. Oh my gosh. Relationships, fitness and lifestyle routines, dealing with dramatic partners, and much more. So let's get into it, Half Past Crew. <sighs> Welcome to Half Past Chai. Cha, cha, chai. I don't know which one it is anymore. We can do whatever. I think we got to stop and just make a decision. Half past chai, everybody. All right. You said chai? I said chai. Is that what we're doing? No, I'm going to say chai. You say chai. I'll say chai. We'll have we'll have a going back Is it because I'm white? Yeah, you're white, so you say chai. Half past say, chai tea, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> can I we eat some non bread too? Everybody would stop watching if you said that. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back to another episode of Half Past Job, where we drink Ja while we spill it. We're your host. My name is K2. My name is Hallie. We're an interracial couple. If you can't already tell, I'm super Indian. I'm super white. And we talk all about being an interracial couple. We share our experiences. We also talk about your experiences because you go to www.halfpastja.com where you can submit all your questions and stories. We release new podcast episodes every Monday at 7 a.m. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Like this video right now, especially if you're watching on YouTube, if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, give us five stars and make sure you follow the podcast. It, it, it really does a ton to the algorithm. We can see the numbers when you guys like the video or when you guys follow. Like that, it actually does a ton to the analytics behind behind the scenes. So settle in, get cozy, grab your cha. Let's get into it. Before we get started into everybody's favorite questions of the week, I do have a couple things I want to note. One, remember, go to Cumin Club, use code Hallie 20 for 20% off. They have amazing stuff. You should seriously check it out. It's delicious. I've made the meals so many times now. And number two, so K2 is releasing a vlog this week. Now it might not come out at the exact time, but if it does, you'll see it on my main channel at the K2 Patel. So, uh, we did a few interesting things this weekend. I don't want to spoil anything, but if you follow us, you know, okay, we went somewhere involving a big apple. Everybody knows. <laughs> but anyways, it's it was a great time. And, and uh, I did it. It was a work trip, so it wasn't like as amazing as uh, it could have been, but we tried to make the most out of it. And so with that comes a really good vlog, honestly. I think it's fantastic. So I'm excited for everybody to get to see it. Very excited. So first question, great guys, we got some great questions, okay? Yes. Very thoughtful and things that we're going to actually have to think about before we answer because they're just so deep. And we're really happy about the transition from the questions. We love all the questions we've ever gotten, believe me. But like you were saying, they've really turned into something. People are wanting advice. They have a deeper meaning. They're not just like, what are your fa- what's your favorite color? <laughs> it's like actual yeah. life advice questions, which... We're learning so much as we're getting older, and so we're, pres- we're providing any guidance that we may have. And so I'm happy that the questions have evolved into something that is really meaningful, and hopefully we can help you guys out just as much as you guys are helping us out. All right, first question. What things about Desi upbringing that Saketu had and Hallie has heard about will you guys change when you have your own kids? Now, we are far away from having kids, okay? But it's a good good thing to think about, Um in terms of how we want to raise our kids, okay? So first we need to identify what is Desi upbringing like? What's it like? Tell everyone. I think it's very similar to every normal upbringing, except you get, I mean, this is just my perspective. Not everybody went through this, okay? Just my perspective is you uh, got hit sometimes when you did the wrong thing, okay? That's okay. That's okay. Uh, well, it's not okay, (laughs) but you, sometimes you get slapped. All right. You do the wrong thing. You know, and, and that was pretty normal. Okay. That's number one. What were some things that you got slapped for? Uh, if I didn't, I don't know, just like random things. Like if I did something dumb or I didn't eat my entire plate or, I, I don't know, just random things. Like there, there wasn't any specific thing. It was just, I did something wrong and boom. It was just, 
see in, in that time in, in that space like i knew like the punishment i what i was about to do i knew i would get punished for so it was all like i knew it was coming okay so i was being stupid at the time but i i get that that is something i don't want to do in the future but I, I let me just list out everything that that i guess involves they see upbringing okay number from two your perspective yeah from my perspective number two you know education is huge you have to make sure you prioritize education relationships and friends aren't a big part of this okay and so that is something that is very crucial is making sure that you get into a good college make sure you have a good degree make sure you have a plan that is something that I always had ingrained in me. And so that discipline is the, is the last, I would say the third thing is like my parents instilled a lot of discipline, you know, making sure I do chores, making sure I do like everything that is asked of me on time. Like if I was asked to put something away and I don't put it away, boom, got hit. So like that is discipline is something that was, I think, um, pretty instilled in me growing up like my dad was huge on if i take something i put it back when i'm done i never ever did that ever and so you still don't i still don't sometimes no. <laughs> and so discipline was something that um was was heavy in our household there's some things you know here and there that also like you know growing up i feel like this is just something my i don't know if it's just me or not but like you know you eat rice and that Every day for lunch, you eat sock and rotli every day for dinner and you stick to it, right? You eat, you eat well, you eat a lot. And that's what, like my parents always said, you got to eat a lot all the time. And, um, I think that's like all I ate. Like it was rice and that during, um, lunch and then sock and rotli during dinner. Uh, and then in the morning, ja, that was it. Right. And so. That is also a huge part of my upbringing is those three <laughs> meals. I, I I do not, like I physically don't remember like eating out often at all, um, which I was very grateful for. I, I'm glad that I didn't eat out as a kid because I know a lot nowadays that's like all what people do is eat out and eat processed foods. And so I'm very grateful for, you know, having that structured food schedule and, and the things I was eating was very healthy, but... I wasn't getting my entire dietary need for what I wanted to do, which was build muscle and run fast. Okay. I was a very, I was in track and cross country and that is all I ate. And that is not a good diet for running or exercising. I just want to <laughs> say something real quick. Um, when, hmm, everybody knew you in track and cross country as the guy that constantly threw up every yeah. single day, like you would throw up every single day after every workout you were puking mm -hmm. you're puking your heart out every yeah. single time <laughs> and so when i went what? to school so during the time of me going to high school instead of um dad and sock i i or sorry uh rice and dad i used to eat a grilled cheese sandwich or a peanut butter jelly sandwich <laughs> and that's all i ate for lunch. like i didn't have anything besides that like that was the meal okay i hated eating school lunch Cause I was just, I just didn't like it. I don't know how to explain. It. I just did not like school lunch. And so I think I had a bad experience with the lunch lady once and that's what ruined that whole experience. But anyways, going back to that, I did throw up a lot because I wasn't eating right. I wasn't eating enough. You were just beyond thin when I, I met very, you as well. I was very skinny, but I didn't understand like I didn't have a love for food. Like I just ate food to eat, eat. Like I just ate food to to eat. Yeah, because you would you Cause say I had to. yeah? Well, because you. I mean, if you like you said you've been eating the same things, you were just used to it. You didn't always necessarily find joy in it. You just ate it to eat and to fuel your body. Mm -hmm. But you didn't. I've always. I mean, this is just my upbringing speaking as well. But I've eaten because I have a love for food, and mm -hmm. obviously I love cooking and doing all the things now. But I, I never viewed eating that way. I viewed eating as an experience and something that I really enjoy yeah. doing, whereas you don't. Mm -mm. And so there's a lot to this. Okay. So these are just four things that I've listed out. Uh, they see <laughs> upbringing has lots 
of things to it, okay? So let's start with number one, the punishment. Hitting, discipline, all that stuff is is a big part of growing up Indian is, is, is making sure that, you know, you are listening to your parents. You know, your parents are the head of the household, making sure you listen to them. And so number one, hitting is something I do not want to bring over into raising our kids. Okay. Yeah, if they do something agree. wrong, we'll explain to them why they're doing that thing wrong. No. And I'm then kidding. we'll discuss form of punishment, but hitting will never be something that we do ever or threaten or that will never be on the table ever. Yeah. Ever. And so that's number one. Good to know. Good talk. Number two is education. I will always instill education into our children. I agree. But to a certain extent. I agree with that too. I don't want them to just not have a life because they're putting so much pressure on themselves studying and working Mm -hmm. so hard. I want to make sure that they enjoy school as well and take advantage of the fun, especially in college, take advantage of campus life and being with friends because I know in college you started to rub off on me a little bit in the sense that I started to stress so much and get so anxious and cry about every single grade or test or quiz, anything. I would get so overwhelmed and I don't want that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I, that we can instill, yes, discipline and caring and working hard and you're going to put your grades first, but then I want our kids to be active and be in sports mm-hmm. and have when, when you're in sports too, I just want to talk about this for a second. You learn to balance mm-hmm. your life. I'm really thankful that my parents put me in so many sports because it taught me to balance my time and learn how to work more efficiently. Yeah, And that really helped me to balance my schoolwork with my activities outside of school as well. Yeah. And so education still a big deal. But I would love to instill an 80-20 rule. With the 80-20 rule, what it means is like 80% of the outcomes come from 20% of the causes. So you put in 20 for 80% of what you need to do, right? And with this methodology, you get to at least live your life a little bit, right? You get to go get that education, put in the effort that is needed for you to get to the 80%, and that other bit of of life that you get to experience with your friends is something that I would love to make sure our kids get. And and I, what I used to do as a kid, I remember this, I would have homework in fifth and sixth grade. Like it was a big deal to, to get it all done. But anyways, I had homework and I'd have friends come over to our house and they'd ask for me, um, to come outside and play. And I would always be like, no, I can't until I finish my homework. And so I'd get done at like eight. It would be dark by that point they would not be let out at that point and so like i wouldn't get to play with them that day boom like i got to miss out on a full day's worth of you know friendships where i could have just gotten to play outside gone in at a right in 7 30 done a homework for an hour whereas like i just physically could not function unless i got my homework done and that is where all my stress and all my anxiety has come from yeah and see for me it was different in the sense that my parents did place a high emphasis on grades and education and that I need to be focused because I'm going to school and I want to go to college and get a good degree and get a good job and all all of that stuff. I totally agree with, but I still, I had a lot of freedom that in the sense that I could hang out with my friends and like what you wanted to do where you said, that you could hang out with your friends and then go and do homework later at night. That's that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed doing that. But sometimes it did result in mm-hmm. me procrastinating and putting things off and staying up very, very late to do homework, which back then I could get less sleep and function and be fine. But now, obviously <laughs> not the case. But I think I see between what we both have said that there does need to be a balance in the sense that I want to instill that their needs, grades are serious. Education is high priority. But again, I think if we put them in other activities and whether, whatever it's music, sports, athletics, any, all the, any of those, it will teach them how to balance their time. Just mm-hmm. like how we've talked about how having a job in college helped us to balance our time so well. Yeah. Same thing with sports, I in agree. my opinion. Next discipline doing chores, everything asked of you, actually doing it when it's asked, that is something our kids will be doing. They will have discipline. And so um, the way that we will have to do that is instead of, I I think one thing I really want to do is not have screens early on in their childhood. 
Um, a lot of times it's hard to focus when you, in, you, you, you introduce a screen in front of the kid early on in their life. Um, and also like phones. Oh my God. There's like, we could go on and on with this discussion. I didn't get a f- cell phone till I was in 11th grade. All right. I got a walkie talkie in high school. Uh, so I could use it when I'm going somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Cause I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyways, I, I think it's, it's, um, yeah, discipline's going to be a difficult one to, to get situated. As an example, let's say we tell our child, our hypothetical child, you cannot go outside until you make your bed, right? I think it's good to have rules like that mm-hmm. because it teaches you, because I, mm. Because Hallie never did any of those things. Uh, Okay, I didn't. And so, but I had, I I learned more so as I got to be an adult. And then obviously when you move into your own house, you have lots of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I see where it is necessary to learn how to do some things. But I also never moved away to college. So I... And I don't want to admit this, but I didn't know how to do laundry (laughs) until we got married. Hey, I didn't know how to do laundry either. So I can't laugh at that. Oh, okay. Well, actually, yeah. I had to do it once when my parents were gone to India, I think. <laughs> How did that and so go? I changed all the whites to pink uh, somehow. I have no idea how, but I, I did. And so that, that's, a, that's a problem. So I think it's really important that we do instill discipline, but we don't want to make it, we don't want there to be punishment after, right? Like we don't want to say, oh, if you don't do this, I'm going to hit you. Yeah, exactly. We don't want that. Then why are you laughing? Why is that funny? Is that- I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I think you're right. It's going to take a lot, especially for me. Um, because, you know, that's what I grew up with. Like, that's what I know. So it's not going to be easy. We're saying all these things. But to actually implement it, it's going to be a whole other story. When we do have a kid, it's probably going to be different, just a little bit compared to this. It's going to be, I have a feeling we're going to be a lot more lenient on some things. We're just going to like let things go a lot more. And that's what a lot of parents do. Because they just don't want to, I don't know. I just see like they don't want to deal with all of that sometimes. Like they just want to like let it go and be like, oh, this is too much. Obviously, yes, agree with you to that point. Very much so easier said than done. We mm-hmm. don't know what it's like to have babies just yet or when they grow to be, you know, 10, yeah. 15, 18 years old. Oh my gosh. Every, I, what this is, I can relate to this in a little bit of, what I'm about to say, but I've seen this meme before where it says dogs, having dogs teaches you how to have babies. Mm-hmm. Having cats teaches you how to have teenagers. Cause they're like, you know what I mean? So, if you have a cat, maybe you understand a little bit cause cats are psycho and Sylvie, <laughs> we've had to, st- we've had to stop this episode. Transparency, full transparency. We've had to stop this episode like five times now because Sylvie's driving me nuts. Yeah, she keeps scratching the couch because she wants her attention. So she's upstairs right now. We put her in the laundry room. She's in room. timeout. She's in timeout. Um, <laughs> yeah. And last thing we got to talk about is the eating thing. Something I really, really want to emphasize is food for the kid needs to be a nutritious meal. Like, I want. I want to. I want everyone in our future family to see food as fuel mm-hmm. and also i want them to enjoy it just exactly. like we, we've learned to do that a lot in because i didn't have a lot of experience with cooking prior to being married you really used to i mean you still don't cook i just want <laughs> them to love all kinds of foods not right. just indian food like i literally that's all i ate yeah and so when i discovered other kinds of foods i was always like hesitant i didn't want to eat those things because I was so used to what I wanted, right? Indian food of, of yeah, whatever Yeah, what you were used to. And so I just want them to be very well-rounded. Yeah, and there are so many different kinds of foods out there, so many different food groups that I want to expose them to. If they like something, great. If they don't, I'm not going to force it on them, but I still want to... I, I want them to know the importance of good and healthy foods. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can we can have some good donuts and stuff i mean that's not to say i love my sweets and desserts and we're still obviously our kids are going to have those eventually too maybe not for a little while i think it's good not to just load them with sugar like all these tiktoks that i see where they're feeding their babies just like donuts that's insane yeah that's crazy we're going to be very cognizant over i think what we 
expose our kids to in any form. Next question, Hallie, what is it? I recently visited Bunai to meet my boyfriend's family for the first time, and it was my personal goal to prepare Cha for his family, which I successfully did with his supervision. And then it made me wonder if Hallie had any pressure from Indian relatives to learn how to cook Indian food or make Cha, or is it just showing an interest and making an effort enough? I'm also fascinated by the different methods of preparing Cha, and I'm curious which of you two makes it and how. For example, I make mine with extra ginger and fresh cardamom. That's a great question. First off, I love that you made it. That's incredible. It took me a long time to master, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an expert by any means, but I make it to how we like it. Mm -hmm. And I've made it for some of the people in your family before and they've been impressed. So I'm happy with that. But love that you made it. That's amazing. This is a great question. Um, Did you feel pressure for food? I don't think so. No, I wouldn't say pressure. I mean, (laughs) well, I I, guess maybe a few times I had some people be like, oh, well, you have to learn to make this for him or like, you know, something like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. This is all the realm of Indian food and even Ja was really new to Mm -hmm. me. So I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Indian recipes are very complex and most of the time people don't even follow recipes, which I'm like... Uh, if I make something enough times, then I don't need a recipe. But to get started, I need a recipe. I can't just go off of somebody saying, oh, you use this and this and this and this. I can't, I'm not that advanced, unfortunately. I think Hallie gets stressed thinking about other people trying her food. So even if she gets the opportunity, I feel like she'll turn it down because she doesn't want to disappoint before she even does it. She's it's a great not that. cook. I just don't... I'm, I don't... Like, I... I'm an outsider. I don't want to embarrass myself. I I don't want to... I know that sounds terrible. I don't think you should be worried about that. I think if you mess up, you mess up. You know, there's no big deal in that, in in messing up. And I shouldn't care. I shouldn't care. And I don't think you will. Like, I... (laughs) What are you going to mess up? You follow recipes. You're really good at following recipes. I don't know why you're worried about that. That doesn't make sense. But I just want to mention one thing about Ja. Hallie cooks all the food. She makes all the Ja. She makes very good Ja. And she herself made the effort in learning how to cook Indian food, make Ja, and do all those things. She makes great butter chicken. She also cooks a lot of uh, other any like, sometimes it's not even Indian food. She cooks all kinds of things that she just finds recipes online and just makes it happen. I can make perfectly round roti. Oh yeah, yeah. I have no mm-hmm. idea how she makes roti because I don't. I don't. It's perfect. It's perfectly round. I can do it. I can't do it. I don't know how you do it. That's but. one of my many talents. I don't know how. I've watched your. It mom took do you a it. while. It did. It did. I'm not gonna act like I'm a superstar at it, but I think I've watched your mom do it so many times that I am fascinated by it and i'm like i I study her technique and Mm -hmm. how she does it and if i do it that way it works so i would say yes um or no no i i wouldn't say that i felt pressure i have had people say things to me before but i think they're just saying out out of good fun because he can't cook (laughs) somebody has to do it Mm -hmm. And obviously, I am always happy to learn new recipes, especially Indian recipes, things that you grew up eating. I'm so happy if I get the opportunity to understand how to make that because I love when I've made things before and you're like, oh, this tastes like something that I used to have growing up. That makes me so happy. I love that. And I want to be able to do that for you. And so to that point, I do all the cooking. I do make the cha. I It took me a long time to do it the right way, I will say. It took me after I went to India and watched people make it like two times a day. Then I was like, okay. Because we didn't, it wasn't like a huge staple in our house before Mm. then. Because we were like, oh, it's full of sugar, blah, blah, blah. But it's really not. And you can put however much you want in it. Mm -hmm. So that was just, yeah. But I like it stronger. You like it a little bit like creamier. Yeah. I like it to be strong, like spice When strong. I was growing up, I would have cha with a lot of milk in it. So that's probably why I like it a little more creamy. But that's a great question. Thanks for asking. The next question is something that's going to be kind of thought provoking for myself as well. Hi, I'm currently navigating through an interracial relationship with different religions. I really want her to be a part of my culture, but I think she has a fear that participating in my culture would somehow be a little against her religion. What do you think? 
Hmm. That's an interesting question. I would be curious to know what her religion is and if it's like a more strict sect of that religion. Mm -hmm. Because I know that there are some like that where, like, for example, I'm Christian, but there are different branches of that that are way more strict than what I am, per se. Because as as I'm not aware in my specific part of my religion that there's anything super strict about saying that I couldn't, you know, like involve myself in any cultural things, which, which I love all the cultural things that I'm able to be involved in. So I would be interested to know what her relationship or what her religion is. Yeah. And also just to keep in mind, you know, if somebody doesn't feel comfortable doing something, I think that's okay. Um, I think, when it comes to a religious activity, some people might be a little hesitant at first just to, because they don't understand what's going on. I think to explain what's going on. And even after you explain, they still don't want to participate. I don't think that you should hold anything against them, but if it's like a cultural event, like let's say Diwali or Holi or anything like that, I know those are both religious in a way. And and sometimes you might not want to participate because you, you feel like that's not your religion, but it, it's a, I think it's important to involve yourself in other cultures, um, not just your own. I think that, that kind of opens up your mind a little bit. It also gets you exposure to what else is out there in the world. I think some people feel so isolated. You can feel so isolated when you just know one thing. And, and I don't know. I think that does you a disadvantage. And it doesn't have to be just Indian culture. There's European culture. There's Chinese culture. There's... Russians have their own culture. You know, there's so many different like cultures out there. And I think everybody should go out of their way and learn, learn something. And, and, and one of those things is if you are involved in a relationship that is multicultural and you, I think it would benefit both of you to learn both sides, both of your cultures, understand what is there, um, learn as much as you can. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's wrong to do. Um, well, it's so beneficial to get that other perspective, not even if it's your significant other, but just to expose yourself to different regions of the world and immerse yourself in the culture. Go travel, go be a part of groups or go to like maybe that culture's holiday. Like I'm thinking specifically in our situation, like the first time that I experienced Diwali or Holi mm-hmm. or um, like by beach or like any of these other things. My question to you is, what would you say to me if I said, oh, I don't really feel comfortable being a part of that because I just, I don't want to be a part of it or I don't feel comfortable with my religion because like, what would Mm. you say to me in that case? I don't know. That's a really good question. I would just be like, I I, I would just say, I mean, if you're not comfortable, can I like help explain what I'm doing? Like explain what is happening? Maybe that'll make you feel a little more comfortable. You don't have to participate in anything if you don't want to. I'm not going to force you to participate in anything, but I think if you do get to a point of marriage, I think it's important to kind of be involved for the sake of the other. You know, I think it's important to like make them feel seen m- that you are appreciating that part of them yeah. that they want to express to you that you're not really being open to. I would say if you were just like my girlfriend, then yeah, it would make sense. I would completely understand. I wouldn't force you to do anything, but because you're my wife, I, I think I would want you to say, hey, I'm not comfortable, but if you if you explain this, I think I would be a little bit more comfortable, at least open to the idea of participating. That would help me a lot more to just get through that bit of, bit of uh, I guess, disagreement between us. Yeah, I would say at least be open to it. You know, have a conversation about it. Ask maybe why are you uncomfortable? Let's talk about it. If there's any part, I would love just for you to see this part of me and, you know, if you think it's against your religion, whatever, can I show you like a YouTube video of what it is? It's not yeah. like I'm trying to convert you or pull yeah. you away from your religion. I just want you to see this is something special to me. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's just, you got to like, you got to compromise a little bit. I've been to church with Hallie before and, you know, it, it it's so, it's so crazy to me, like how you notice certain similarities, certain differences. And I would never know that if I didn't like go experience that little, um, that, that experience with Hallie. And so it's just, it's something to just keep your head open, keep your, keep your mind open to different experiences. Just consider it an experience. Just consider it a, uh, a learning ability. Just consider it a a way to learn about another 
person's culture. And so I think getting that perspective is important. Well, and that's the key in being in an interracial relationship, right? Because you've got your differences in culture and religion. You have to have that open mindset and willingness to be able to learn and grow from your experiences. So I think if someone in the relationship is being closed off, then that's not necessarily a good sign. Yeah. That's just my perspective. I agree. Well, thanks for asking the question. Hope we did justice. Hallie, what's the next question? This question is for the both of you. I've seen on your Instagram, you guys run a lot and are very active in that regard. My question is, do you guys ever do any weight or strength training or plan to? Keep up the good work, guys. I love y'all and y'all's content. Thank you very much. We do. We do a lot of different things. I have a workout split each week that I'm pretty devoted to. So usually Monday is a little bit of full body strength and some miles. I think I do a little bit longer distance on Monday, um, maybe like, I don't know, 40, 45, 50 minutes in running. Tuesday, I like to do either cycling or more running. Wednesday is usually um, a hit full body workout day and some kind of speed workout like jump rope. Thursday's usually an off day. Friday's usually some kind of running interval workout or hills or something or in a little bit more mileage or not a ton of mileage, but some. And then Saturday is always long run day, which depends on how I'm feeling that day. I would say I run at least an hour every Saturday and just up it from there. And then Sunday is an off day for me. And I try and copy Hallie. So <laughs> um, that's that's our workout schedule. We, we do try and stay pretty fit just because we did take like, I would say once we got married, we kind of fell out of working out and it really affected me for sure. And I know it affected Hallie as well, but like for me, I just started feeling aches and pains out of nowhere. I'm like, what is happening? Am I getting old? But no, it's not that I'm getting old. It's that I stopped working out these muscles that we use every day. And when you start using a different muscle that you don't work out often, you start feeling pain. And so if you just work out every muscle, um, then you don't feel as much pain and you feel stronger and you feel healthy. And so I think everybody should at least work out, um, two, three days a week. That's the minimum, uh, just to get your body moving and, and, and feel, feel good. It always feels good. Once you start working out on a regular schedule, it always feels good. It, it sucks when you are getting into it. Like me and Hallie will be on the couch and we're like all dressed, ready to go for our run. And I'm like, Oh, do we have to go? And then when we get back from our run, we're always energized. We're always feeling good. We're ready for the rest of the day, whatever it might be. And so just wanted to let that be said. Oh, and yeah, absolutely. I want to point out the fact that there are so many times where I don't feel like working out. But one of the things that gets me motivated to work out is putting on a cute outfit, drinking my water, drinking some prime, just, you know, having my I love my um, pre-workout breakfast. If I have it, if I work out earlier in the day, which is peanut butter toast with honey, it's delicious. And I love it. It fuels me. It's so good. But there are so many times where I don't want to work out and it can be really hard to get into that. But it, it's crazy what you to what you were saying, Suke, too. After we got married, I feel like we both worked so hard to get in shape, to get in shape for our wedding mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we we got married and wanted life to calm down a little bit because things had been so chaotic for so long. And that was one of the things that we let go. And I hate that. We did that because um, it got I, I got in a bad habit of not doing anything for a while. I'd go on some walks and that was pretty much it. But then I discovered my gym at my work. Um, we get so many classes offered to us for f not for free, but if you go certain time or however many times in a month, you get the gym for free. So we both do that. We love taking advantage of the gym. And now, since I've gotten into such a good workout split and I've got my two designated rest days, I know when my rest days are. I know my workout is going to be always the night before, you know, I know I have it in my calendar what I'm going to be doing, which is another thing. Prioritize your workouts, write them down so that it's harder to skip. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And so there's a lot to it. Having your calendar, you know, written out is always important. Yeah. So that's our workout schedule. And this next question that Hallie's about to go through is a pretty thought provoking one. I'm so glad 
that it's been submitted. So Hallie, go ahead and read it. Love the podcast. I wanted to ask what you both are doing to deal with stress and anxiety in your lives. I myself have been meditating for a few years now and have even posted guided meditations on a meditation app called Insight Timer. Everyone's healing, spiritual, and religious journeys look different. I know you guys have mentioned that you'll be talking about religion in a future episode, possibly in season two. However, is there anything with regards to healing and growing as individuals and as a couple that you can share? Any tools you found helpful? Thank you and keep up the great work. Deal with stress and anxiety. There are so many avenues here of ways that you can deal with this. But I will say the first thing that comes to my mind is exercising. It's never a bad ex- or it's never a bad idea to exercise. It can be daunting to do it and that can stress me out more sometimes and when I'm already stressed out, but actually doing it, I'm like, "Huh. That was actually really good for me. I feel a little bit better and I have some more mental clarity now." All right, let me go through something, okay? I have chronic sweating hands and sweating feet, okay? I go for a run, immediately stops. I don't know what it is, but I definitely have anxiety and I stress about every little thing that doesn't need to be stressed about, okay? I know it may not seem like it with all the content we post, it's all positive and sunshine and rainbows, but listen, I have major anxiety when it comes to getting tasks done. I love to be on top of things and when something doesn't go my way, I experience anxiety immediately. And so the literally the only way that I've found besides medication, which I don't want to do, Um, it's running for me. And I think you have to find whatever yours is. It could be strength, right? Lifting weights, or it might be meditation. It might be crocheting something to ease your mind. Right. And, and, and it, it takes time to figure that out. And like he said, everyone's healing, spiritual, religious journey looks different. Sometimes I know that a lot of people have found peace by, you know, starting their belief in whatever religion they they ha- they grew up with and they fell out of that that faith and they started to uh, go ahead and and start practicing that faith again and and all of a sudden they feel an immense amount of joy and they feel no more anxiety and them praying you know usually helps them out so there everybody experiences in different ways yeah for me i would say hobby wise of course exercising as we talked about running I love reading. If I'm able to calm myself down and read a little bit, that's amazing. I love praying as well. Praying is something that gives me a lot of peace in my faith. I could be reading the Bible, whatever it is, but just something to calm me down, something to give me a little bit of advice when I need it, something that will put me on track and give me guidance. It's really hard to find guidance when you're not currently hearing it from anybody, right? Like, there are certain situations specific to me that you can't always help me with. And while you do try and help, you you just can't. And same mm. to you as well. There are certain situations that I can't help you with. And so it helps to seek your religion in times like those to look for answers when you can't always get them from the people around you. That being said, there, oh gosh, I'm just thinking about all the, all the times that We both have anxiety. We both struggle with that. We both struggle with stress all the time. Again, I like what you said about the content that we put out with this podcast, with the vlogs, with our short form content, with all of it. It looks amazing. Our lives sometimes seem amazing. We don't always post the real things that we're going through, all the arguments that we have sometimes Mm -hmm. when we're stressed, all the tears, all the everything. There are so many things that we don't show and we try and be real with a lot of those things but we also don't it's hard because I do want to be real with people Mm -hmm. but I don't want to like every time I'm crying be like hey guys what's up (laughs) just burst down to tears if you want to see some of our pre-show shenanigans you can become a member and you'll get access to all those videos but you know you can we do post some things that are like fully us we can't put all that out there all the time because you would literally unfollow us. <laughs> but I think that I think it's important to focus down on on certain things that help you relieve that anxiety and stress and make sure you acknowledge it. Hardest part is acknowledging it. Like I'm like, oh, I'm so, my hands are all sweaty, and and I didn't know. Like I just thought it was normal, right? And then I started to fully like take exercise seriously. And on those off days, like. 
the days that we don't run, don't exercise. Those are the hardest days. It's important to take those off days, but man, it is so hard for me to feel okay. Like my heart's beating a little faster. I'm, my armpits are sweaty or my hands are sweaty. Or my feet are sweaty. I have to change my socks like two times. Sorry, TMI. But see, you're a sweater. For me, I just, it, it feels like there's just weight on mm-hmm. my chest. I feel like I can't breathe. There will be it's, so many times where I'm at work and I have to go just settle down, sit myself in a focus room for 10 or 15 minutes and just calm down and breathe mm-hmm. because I just feel like I can't even breathe to catch up. And with work, work is always crazy. And then our personal lives and our weekends and everything else is so mm-hmm. crazy and texting people back feels like a chore and it's hard for me to get to call my parents sometimes because there's just so much going on and I feel like I don't get a second to breathe and it's exhausting. So there are just things that I have to do, like taking a second for myself, reading, praying, running, whatever it may be, I need to do those things or else I'm going to lose my mind because I'm a very anxious person and I hate that. I hate that so much, but that's just how life is. Unfortunately yeah. for a lot of people, a lot of people struggle with stress and anxiety. Yeah. And so to that point, I want to talk about the importance of communicating this in a relationship, because if you keep that bottled up and you don't share that with your partner, you can blow up on your partner. Yeah. And take everything out on them, which mm-hmm. I do sometimes. Um, sometimes. I do it. <laughs> Uh, guilty as charged, but uh, I think it's something that I do. I do a really good job at communicating. Like uh, sometimes I will, I will blow up. Yes. But then I'll be like, Hey, I'm so sorry. It's because I'm stressed about this specific thing. My goal is to say that before I blow up. So she knows what the case is and then it, it'll prevent me from blowing up. It doesn't always happen that way though. No. Like the day of the solar eclipse. Oh my God. Do you remember? You had to travel that day and we had to watch it at the (sighs) airport and you were very stressed. And I understand because traveling makes you a little anxious and you're doing it all the time. And I completely get it. But I also try and do everything I can to help you. Like I packed your suitcase. I packed you a snack bag. I got your backpack ready. Like I try to do Mm -hmm. so many things to help with that. And that's the other important thing, too, is. One thing that we like to do on the days that you travel is go on a nice walk during lunch because walking and talking for us just really works. Oh my God. If you don't want to go for a run, go for a walk. Holy crap. I think the biggest thing, just get outside. Even if you don't walk, just sit yourself in the quiet of nature for a little bit. Just no phone, no distractions, nothing. We humans were meant to be outside, okay? We were not meant to be enclosed in a house full of screens and messages from work. My goodness, you guys were meant to be outside. And so it's good to go for a walk. I don't know if you've ever been to like the city, like we just went to New York City, right? And and you see that place is not very car focused. So everybody's walking places. Everybody's um, everybody's taking the train. Everybody is, is going places and, and they... And it's just different. The environment there is just different. Even though they may be stressed, they're getting, they're walking places, going all kinds of, uh, doing all kinds of things. And it's just a different vibe there compared to people here. Go outside in this. (laughs) If you go outside in our neighborhood, we will be the only ones outside. No one's, no, you can't see a person outside because we're all car focused everywhere else besides like the big cities in in America. And so um, going for a walk will, will change your life. Yeah, absolutely. That's been one of the tools that we've found really helpful is just communicating that, being able to get outside together and just sit, put all put away all distractions, get off social media, anything else that can make you more anxious than you need to be. It, yeah, taking away technology is also a huge thing. Disclaimer before we end the podcast, this does not mean a walk will fix all your issues, okay? This does not mean exercise will fix all your issues. This does not mean religion or... um meditating will fix all your issues. It takes time. It takes consistency to fully ingrain yourself in fixing the problem. First step is acknowledging it. The next step is being consistent with trying to solve it. Yes. And also communicating to those around you, like my husband, you, for example, that I'm dealing with something and I really need your help. And if I fall off track when I want to be being consistent in these areas of my life to help make my situation better. I need you to be there for me to pick me up. Same to you as Mm -hmm. well. So yeah, just want to point that out. 
Not just a simple walk is going to fix your anxiety. No, it's a lot of different things that need to go into effect that you need to decide what's best for you and be consistent with that every single day and show up for yourself because if you don't show up for yourself, nobody else will. Exactly. So guys, thank you so much for making it this far in the video. Make sure you use Hallie 20 for 20% off. Watch the vlog if it's out. It'll be linked somewhere in this video or in the description below. We didn't get to go through all the questions, but we still do answer questions at the end of every episode. So make sure you stay tuned for the upcoming episodes because they are pretty fantastic, everybody. So as a reminder, we do have a website, www.halfpastjob.com. Go there to submit your questions and stories. There's some things that are going to pop up pretty soon. Woo! So you don't, you never know what's what you're going to find up there. Continue to submit those questions uh, and Half Past Crew, we love you. We thank you for your support. We are so excited to grow this podcast and continue communicating with our community. Please share this with your friends. Please make it known. Let's help grow our community. We got to get bigger, guys. We need to reach people. We love communicating with all of you and meeting you and DMing with you, all the things. So please also share, post us on your story text it to your friends. I don't know. Send this episode to somebody who could use it. Please share it with people. And as always, we will see you next Monday at Half Past Job.